Hi, Crosswalk. Uh, this is Amanda Eidelman. Uh, I'm a contributing um, writer for Crosswalk.com. And I'm here to talk a little bit about my article, Four Things That Improve um, Intimacy and Marriage. <laughs> uh, so, you know, all of us desire intimacy. That's a really key part of how we were made. Um, God made us, you know, for connection, for relationship with him. And marriage is definitely one of those primary places that we find um, intimacy. But it's not the only place, you know. Um, but intimacy is defined as close familiarity, friendship, or closeness. Um, it also references, obviously, like physical intimacy. Um, but that closeness um, physically or emotionally depends a lot on kind of our overall behavior in our marriages. So some of the things that I highlighted as to promote unit, or intimacy uh, is to seek unity, which can be really tricky, I think. Um, maybe just for me, but <laughs> I think uh, it's really easy to sort of get one track minded and marriage, um, and just life. I mean, we are made with ourselves at the center of, of our, you know, worlds and we have to work really hard to think about other people. It's just the way that, you know, we are the way that sin affects us. Um, but in marriage, you know, we're called to walk in unison with somebody else. And that doesn't mean we have to do the same as them. And doesn't mean we have to just you know, be yes man to everything that the other person says, but it does mean that we have to seek uh, the same goals, the same ends, and keep each other in the loop. Um, you know, we can't make plans without each other. We have to work towards the same goals, even if differently, and respect those differences because, you know, that's, we weren't designed to be exactly the same. Um, and I think, you know, when we can walk in unity, then there's a more freedom to communicate and to be in friendship and to cultivate closeness in, uh, in your marriage. Um, two is embrace radical forgiveness. And, uh, I think at some point in every marriage, there's going to be a moment where you really are going to have to make a decision. Um, am I going to let bitterness continue to grow in my heart or am I going to embrace radical forgiveness? And when there's bitterness and walls up and lack of trust and hurt, um, big hearts, tiny hearts, you know, our marriage, we have had no major breaks, you know, but there's been things just like miscommunication over and over again, um, failed expectations, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, fighting, not, uh, with grace, um, uh, lots of things like that, that over time can build up you know, this bit bitterness and resentment, which gets in the way of our ability to remain close to each other. Because if we're, we're guarded and bitter, you know, that intimacy goes straight out the window. So the choice comes to embrace forgiveness, you know, undeserved forgiveness, because ultimately, you know, none of us deserve forgiveness and only Christ um, provides the strength, you know, in relationship for us to walk in forgiveness and he's the one that ultimately provides um, our ultimate forgiveness but we have to make that decision over and over to walk with radical forgiveness so that we can remain close to each other um, and the next one I said is to be together and maybe um, you know different times of life I think this probably is harder easier I think right now for my marriage <laughs> Being together seems like, duh, you need to be together to be close and intimate. It's not easy. <laughs> we currently have five kids. Um, two of them are uh, toddlers. So, um, but the toddlers aren't even the ones that always take up the most space and time in real estate in our day. Um, you know, the older ones, they want to talk, they want to play, they want to interact, you know, they want to play games, they want to stay up later, all things you know, wonderful. We want to be with our children, but ultimately it can make being together, even having one solid uninterrupted conversation really hard. Um, and so it takes a lot of really intentional work to make sure that in our days and weeks and months, 
you know, we actually have some uninterrupted time together. And that is something that we are constantly having to work towards. Four is communicate. Um, you know, every relationship we have, they thrive or die based on the amount of communication that we um, invest in that friendship. Um, and it's true in marriage if we, you know, just start passing on the highlights um, and not really taking time to daily share, you know, big things, little things, even just detail things like, you know, we need to go pick up X, Y, and Z. We need milk. All of that is important to keeping a close, intimate relationship. Um, yeah, so those are some ideas, some things that I'm personally <laughs> working on. So I felt like a good article to be writing um, just to remind myself, like, I need to be full of forgiveness. I need to be intentionally about close to my husband. I need to communicate with him better um, and more often, more thoroughly. Um, and I need to strive for unity um, because as long as I'm working just for me first, it's very hard to, you know, um, build closeness in our um, marriage relationship. So hope those things help a little bit. Thank you.